you guys. Um, today for section 11.2, we are going to learn about something called special right triangles. These are kind of like a type of shortcut um, that you can use in certain types of triangles that have certain angles. So we are going to look at um, 45, 45, 90 triangles. So those are the angle degrees. So we're saying that this triangle has two angles that are 45 degrees and then the right angle at 90. And then we're also going to look at 30, 60, 90, which are also going to be the angles um, sizes. So let's look at a 45, 45, 90 first. Because their um, two angles are the same, 45, 45, it also makes the legs the same size. So we have the same lengths on these two shorter legs right here. Um, if you remember a, a triangle that has two legs that are the same size, we call that also an isosceles triangle. So this is a type of isosceles. Um, and so what we're going to do is they found a pattern. If you have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, there's a pattern between the side lengths and the hypotenuse that you can just memorize. So instead of doing the Pythagorean theorem to get the three sides, you can just memorize these little formulas um, and kind of use it as a short uh, shortcut. So I kind of wrote over it, but the two legs, since they're, again, isosceles, they're gonna be the same size. We say they're X big. And then the hypotenuse is going to be whatever X is just times the square root of two. So you can think the hypotenuse is whatever the leg is, the, the two shorter sides, take that length and just times it by the square root of two. And that's gonna be a lot faster than doing the Pythagorean theorem that we learned last time. So um, if we have an example, let me kind of zoom in here. Um, if we start with the right triangle that has a hypotenuse that is one big, um, then the two legs here, if they're X and X, remember they're gonna be the same size. So the legs of this triangle are going to be the same. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find their length or we can use our little shortcut here, um, which will be a lot quicker. But let's just look at some more specific examples in those pictures. Okay, so this says find the length of the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle with the legs of length nine. So they didn't give us a picture, but we could draw one. So here's our right angle. These two would be the 45 degree angles. They're saying the legs are nine. So this would be nine and nine. They want to know how big that hypotenuse is. So the little shortcut is these two sides are X big. So X equals nine, X equals nine. And we know the formula for the hypotenuse is X times the square root of two. So since X is nine, we're just gonna plug it in. So our hypotenuse, h, is just going to equal nine for x times the square root of two. And you're literally done. So that's going to be way faster than doing the Pythagorean theorem that we learned last time. So we like when we come across these 45, 45, 90 triangles. Okay, let's try another one. Let's look at this one right here. So we see the two 45s, and then the hypotenuse is always the longer side. If you can't tell which side that is, it's always gonna be across from that right angle. So here would be our hypotenuse. So that means since it's a 45, 45, this side is eight. So this side also has to be eight because we have that isosceles triangle. These two lengths are gonna be the same since the angles are the same. Um, and then because these both are X and X, the formula for the hypotenuse is X times the square root of two. So if x is eight, we're just gonna get eight times the square root of two. And that would be your answer. So those ones are really easy where they just give you the legs and you can just plug it in to get your hypotenuse. The next one is going to be a little bit trickier because they give you the hypotenuse and they want you to work backwards to find the legs. So this is the more tricky example um, or scenario with these triangles. So. Remember the two short sides are X and X big, and the hypotenuse is X times the square root of two. So if it matches up really nicely like this, they both have a square root of two on them, then X has to be nine, right? These have to be the same. So then if X is nine, these two sides are also going to be nine, and those would be your answers. So just kind of working backwards there. Okay, let's look at a 30, 60, 90 now. So with a 30, 60, 90, 
Um, it's not going to be an isosceles triangle because our angles are different. So these ones are kind of like a taller, skinnier triangle where we still have the right angle. We have the little 30 degree angle and then a 60 degree angle down here. And what happens on this one, it's a little bit trickier because the legs aren't matching, but we have our two shorter sides here. The hypotenuse, well the short side, let's start with that one. The shortest side is going to be X big, so this little side right here. The hypotenuse, the longest side, is twice that length. So if this is x, this is two times that, so 2x. And then that middle side, this is the middle length, is going to be x times the square root of 3. So that one's a little bit of a trickier one to remember. It has the square root of 3 on it, whereas the last one was the square root of 2. So um, when you're labeling your sides, find your short side. That's going to be x big. Your hypotenuse is going to be 2x, and then the middle length side will be x times the square root of 3. And that's going to be our shortcut, or the little formulas that we use for each side. So, um, let's look at an example of that. So find the lengths of the legs of a 30, 60, 90 triangle that has a hypotenuse of 4 square root of 3. So I'm going to label a picture. So here's our right angle, here's the 30, here's the 60. So they've told us that our hypotenuse is 4 square root of 3. So remember that's the long side. So this would be 4 square root of 3. And when I'm trying to solve these problems, I like to go and write the formulas on each side. So since this was the hypotenuse, the formula for this is 2x. My short side is x big and my middle length side is x times the square root of 3. So on this one, we know that hypotenuse is what they gave us. So I'm going to use this number, and I'm going to set it equal to the formula that I know that I should use. So I'm going to say I know the hypotenuse is 4 square roots of 3, and that has to equal the formula for the hypotenuse, which is 2x. And we want to figure out what x is so that I know what this side is. And then once I know what this side is, I can plug it in for this one. So that's going to be kind of our process there. So if I want to find out what x is, I need to get rid of this 2 by dividing by 2 on each side. So that those cancel, and I just get x back. But then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we get 2 square roots of 3. So we just solved that x is 2 square roots of 3. That's going to be this side right here. 2 square roots of 3. So there's one answer. But then I also take x and I plug it into this guy right here. So this one's kind of funny because if I plug in 2 square roots of 3 for x, I have this other square root of 3 right here. So when that happens with square roots, we just times the two numbers on the inside. So this would be the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would be the square root of 9. We can combine them like that. But then 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is just equal to 3. So I just get 2 times 3, which is 6. And so that would be the length there. So this side is equal to 6. The short side is equal to 2 square roots of 3. And then our hypotenuse is 4 square roots of 3. Maybe I'll relabel that really quick so it looks nicer. So we found this is 2 square roots of 3. This side is 6. And then they gave us that this one was 4 square roots of 3. That one was a little bit trickier, just because we had to do a little bit more math, but not too bad. Okay, let me zoom in on this one. So, here we see here's our 30, 60, 90. They gave us the hypotenuse again. They said our hypotenuse is 10, and we want to find the short side and the middle side. So again, when I start these problems, I like to take the formulas. We know the short side is equal to x. The hypotenuse is 2x, and this side would be x times the square root of 3. And then I just work backwards from there. So take whatever number they gave you and set it equal to the formula. So we're going to say 10 is equal to 2x, and then solve backwards for x. So we'll divide by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So x equals 5. Well, if x is 5, that's how big this side is. So we found this side. And if x is 5, I just plug it into this one. And I get 5 square root of 3. So I know this is not too bad. Let's do one more. Okay, on this one, again, I like to label the sides. We have our 30, 60, 90. 
This time they gave us the short side right here. So this side is X big, the hypotenuse is 2X big, and that middle length side is X times square root of three. So these ones I think are the easiest where they give you the short side because if X is equal to 12, I literally just take that number and I plug it in here. So if I get two times 12 for X is equal to 24. So there's my hypotenuse. And if I take 12 and I plug it in for X here, I get 12 times the square root of three. And there's my answer. So we're done. So again, these are just meant to be shortcuts so that you don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem. You don't have to do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You just memorize the little formulas. You can just plug them in and find the sides that way. So again, it's meant to be a shortcut um, and save you time. So let's look at one more problem. This will be kind of similar to the story problems that you'll see on Math Excel. This one says the distance from one corner to the opposite corner of a square playground is 96 feet. To the nearest foot, how long is each side of the playground? So we have a square playground. And then they're saying if I go from corner to corner, we get 96 feet. Well, this is obviously gonna be a right angle, hopefully, right, if it's a square playground. So we just made a triangle right here. But because this was a 90 degree angle that we cut in half, these two, if I divide 90 by two, I get 45. And then this would also be 45. So we just made a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So if I use that, let me draw just the triangle now. If I take this triangle, we know this is 96 and that these have to be the same size since it's a square. So we have the isosceles triangle with the 45, 45, 90. So we're gonna use the formula for those ones. The formulas for the 45, 45, 90, I think this is an easier one is x and x for the two legs and then the hypotenuse was x square root of two so again i like to label the three sides with the formulas and then take whatever number they gave you and set it equal to that formula so i'm going to take 96 and set it equal to x times the square root of two so on this one if i'm trying to solve for x i need to get rid of that square root of two by dividing and when we divide by square roots we have to do something kind of tricky. Some mathematician somewhere decided we don't like having square roots in the denominator. So to get rid of them, we do something and we call, or we times it by itself on the top and the bottom. So this is kind of a tricky step right here. So, and the reason we do that is because if I take the square root of two and I times it by the square root of two, that equals the square root of four, but then the square root of four is just equal to two. So I just get two on the bottom. And then here on the top, I can't times a whole number times a square root. We can't combine them. So I'm just gonna keep it as 96 square root of two. So think of those as just becoming a two. The square root almost just goes away. And then we get 96 times the square root of two. So if this is equal to X, I can simplify 96 divided by two though. So 96, if I reduce that and divide it by two equals 48. So I get 48 square root of two is equal to X. And so that would be the sides of our um, park. This would be 48 square root of two and 48 square root of two. But they did say to round to the nearest foot. So if we just put that into our calculator, if I do 48 and then times it by the square root of two, we just wanna get a decimal um, so that we can see to the nearest foot how many feet that would be. So this eight would just bump this up to be about 68 feet, we'll round up. So it's about 68 feet. So just be careful in those story problems, they might have you actually get the decimal and round because um, if we were in real life, we wouldn't say, oh, the park is 48 square roots, two feet long. That doesn't, it's not how we talk, right? It doesn't really make sense. So we're gonna just convert that to the decimal form. Um, and do that. And then again, also just be careful when you get those square roots on the bottom, we have to get rid of them. So, hey, your homework's just going to be Math Excel 11.2. So let me know if you have any questions.